On this special edition of What's Going On with Shipping, the Mumbai Maersk runs aground off of Germany. Well, to quote Mike Schiller over at G-Captain, as he sent me this Twitter note today, seriously, though, what is going on with shipping today? Just did a video on Trinity Spirit, the LNG, excuse me, the uh, FBSO off of Nigeria, bursting into flames, breaking apart and sinking and the hunt for crew members that are missing. Now we have this story, the Mumbai Maersk ran aground coming in to Germany. So let's go ahead and head over to the story right here and take a look at the latest on what is happening. So this is uh, Mike's story right here over at G-Captain. Maersk megaship grounded in Germany. A Maersk megaship uh, Mumbai Maersk is, is one of the uh, triple E's, uh, the largest vessels in the Maersk fleet. It, the triple E's are the ones that started off the ultra large container vessel mania back in, in, in the mid tw uh, 2010s. So uh, Maersk megaship is run aground in the North Sea, just off Germany, not far from a popular tourist island. The Danish shipping giants confirmed that Mumbai Maersk grounded outside of Bremerhaven and efforts are underway to refloat the vessel. All crew are reported safe. There's no pollution and no sign of hull breach. The entrance to the port of Bremerhaven, one of the largest ports in Europe, is not impacted. A flotilla of tugs will try to refloat the vessel at the next high tide around midnight, which is expected to be about a half meter above normal. A first attempt to refloat the, the ship was aborted. So real quick, North Sea area where this ship is. Let's go ahead and pull it up here. So here she is right here. You can see her in this area coming into the estuary that is Bremerhaven right there. High tides in this area. North Sea, uh, notorious for really big high tides. Uh, and what you can see from the picture, even with Mike had posted here, you can see the boot top. That's that black stripe right there where the water line should be when the ship is, is, is fully loaded. Now, she isn't really, she's probably about two thirds to half loaded right there but she should not be this high out of the water. This is because, not that she has run up on this, but she shut and she ran aground and then the water dropped. And there's no purpose in trying to drag her off right now until the tide comes back in. There was posted this image right here showing her track coming in, doing this kind of full circle here and then hitting this spoiled area where she is aground right now. We're gonna look at a story that has a little bit more details and, and data on this than what you see right here. Coming back to the story right here, uh, built in 20, 2018, Mumbai Maris is one of the largest ships in the world, coming in at 399 meters and 19,630 TEU capacity. Ship is registered in Denmark. So she is just about a meter shy of whatever given was uh, basically the same exact size. But again, this ship isn't sideways in the Suez. She's not blocking the channel into Brum Bremerhaven. She is aground on a shallow shoal area going into Bremerhaven. Uh, this is the statement that Maersk made. We can confirm that on 2 February at about 2300 hours CET, Central European time, Mumbai Maersk was grounded outside of Bremerhaven. All crew is safe. There's no pollution, no sign of hull breach. The vessel is on ground on a shallow patch and as such entrance to the port is not obstructed and port operations is running as normal. Sailing from Asia, the vessel had its last stop in the port of Rotterdam before grounding outside of Bremerhaven, which explains why there's so many containers, cells missing containers right there. The vessel is on its way to discharge and consequently the cargo meant for Bremerhaven is still on board along with cargo destined for Scandinavian countries. Uh, typically these containers would be offloaded and then put onto smaller feeder vessels to head up into Scandinavian countries. You don't send a vessel this size through the Skattegat and Kattegat to into the Baltic. A first attempt to free the vessel has been performed unsuccessfully. Extra tugs are being deployed and a new attempt to expect at the coming high tide around midnight on 3 February. Mumbai Maersk is reportedly carrying 7,380 containers. Uh, and then we have this update right here. Uh, two specialized salvage tugs, Union Sovereign, Union Manta are en route to the scene. You may recall earlier this week that Sovereign was the primary tug involved in the rescue of Juliet D. We talked about Juliet D in our Monday, What the Ship? bulk carrier, which broke free from the anchorage off the Netherlands and came within a few miles of grounding. So this is the track line for marine traffic where you can see the vessel 
coming in. We'll look again uh, at, at marine traffic in a second because we have it right here. The incident with the Mumbai Maersk is taking place near the German island of Wengerorg. I'm not sure how to say that. Part of the Frisian Islands. Uh, worrying residents there are rekindling memories of the MSC Zoe, which had lost some 342 containers overboard in heavy weather not far from this location in January 2019. Again, we've seen this with container ships losing containers. Not really a, a danger in this situation. Uh, the incident created an environmental disaster for the heavily tourism-related island. Uh, it goes on here, and we've got some more images of it. I want to come up here to the Mar uh, this story. This is a Reuters story. Some really good imagery right here uh, showing the vessel. Again, you can see it. That's that image we have from here. Here's our track line out of Rotterdam coming in. And the imagery we have of the vessel right now. Let's go in here to the region and take a look at this. So here she is, Mumbai Maersk. Uh, her status is aground, as you can see right there. You've got these other vessels in the area. So the other vessels that are in the area are going to be really key here. So RT Evolution, this is a small tugboat in the area. RT Pioneer, again, really small tugboat, probably is not going to be of much use here. Fair Play 25, a larger tugboat in the area. And then over here, Sovereign, this tug supply vessel. So they're bringing in these larger salvage tugs. And one of the things that larger salvage tugs will typically do, let's look at Mumbai Maersk first, and let's see if we could pull up her past track here. Yep, you can see that track line right here of her coming in. Looks like she was coming in to Bremerhaven and then made a U-turn. Now, the question is, why did she make this U-turn? Not clear. Maybe she was told to wait for a pilot. Maybe she was told to come back out. But she made this U-turn heading out and then swung back in. And that's where she ran into this spoiled area right here. You can see the track coming in here. That's a traffic separation scheme. She was right on track for heading into Bremerhaven. Does this big U-turn. Not clear why she did the big U-turn and then did another big U-turn. Not really sure about it. This is Maersk's statement, which we just read. We talked about the extra tugs coming in here. So not exactly clear. But as this story says with Mike Hat on here, that we know these salvage tugs are on the way. The Union uh, Sovereign and the Union Manta are coming in. So the Sovereign right here, larger vessel, one of the things that they can do, understand, is not just provide pulling. Pulling on a, on a grounded vessel is you're just using your props. You're trying to get that pull from it. What salvage tugs can do is they can drop anchors, fix themselves to the bottom, pull on the anchors while they pull on the tow lines and use their ship engines. So they're using even more horsepower. They're not just using the horsepower from the engine. And that's going to be key for getting her off. Again, really high tides in this area. They will probably try to pull her out in the same track line that she came in on try to pull her out because she would have moved mud and everything out of the way. You're going to try to get her. If not, if they can't pull her out that way, they'll try to spin her bow around and get her bow out of the spoil area and pull it that way. So this attempt will be the first attempt to do it. They got to be careful about doing more damage to the vessel. The last case scenario would be trying to get containers off this vessel. This vessel is so high. Uh, floating cranes are really tough to do. Uh, probably what they would look at to do now is pump off ballast and fuel oil if they don't get her off on the on the on the high tide tonight. But they said this high tide tonight should be the one. Uh, it, it's a little higher than normal. Should be able to get her out and and pull her off. There is plenty of salvage tugs and apparatus in this area in the North Sea that can be called upon for for it. They will be monitoring the vessel to see if there's any ruptures of the fuel tanks for spillage about it. But again, big question is going to be why she did that big turnaround there coming in. Uh, again, these vessels operate this area all the time. Some people are going to sit there and say, are these vessels getting too big? Now, the, the question I have, just based on what we see right there, is why the vessel did the first 180, pulling away out of the channel from Bremer, Bremerhaven, and then pulling around into this second area, and then cutting across that spoil area there that has a little bit of 
shallow water that she obviously ran into. Understand she is a, a extremely large vessel and extremely large vessel her size. If we look here at marine traffic and we pull up her data, let's pull her up here real quick and look at what her data looks like. Oh, we're in the track, that's why we're doing it. Let's go ahead back here. There we go. You know, when you start looking at the particulars of this vessel right here coming out of Rotterdam into Bremerhaven, and if we look at vessel information right here, uh, you get to see the, the specifics of the vessel. She's an extremely large vessel. Again, 399 meters, probably drawing about 35 to 40 meters. My apologies, I was at way too deep of the draft. Draft is about 13 meters, that, that's uh, her reported draft. And if you look at uh, Maris Triple E's, they usually run between 13 to 15 meters. Again, that's, that's I was doing feet. Uh, you get into roughly around 45, 50 feet when you start looking at those big extreme drafts for it. I'm always flipping between meters and feet, so I apologize. Uh, different Americans use feet. Obviously everybody else in the world uses meters. So it'll be interesting to see how this uh, rolls out. Obviously, we'll be following along with this. It sounds like there is a lot of information going on today right now with vessels. You can see her there. You can see how high she usually is with a very light load on board. And obviously, that's not her condition right now. Uh, she is about half loaded. I think we said about 7,000 containers. So we'll be following along with this story. We will keep you posted as more information comes out. Sounds like we're going to have a big recap on Monday's What the Ship. That's our weekly show where we hit the five big news stories in the maritime sector. So if you found this interesting, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to so be alerted about new videos when they come out, when there are issues with maritime disasters. We do cover them here, so we'll post a special episode. Uh, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, and if you can, can you know, support us on Patreon. We appreciate it, and it helps us do this job. So until our next episode, Sal, signing off.